Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Fini. These are the four guardians of the Alola region. In the past, they have battled against the Ultra Beasts and are currently worshipped by the people of the Alola region. With their introduction to VGC, they possess a very strong threat against a lot of things in the current metagame. And today I am here to show you guys their strengths, their weaknesses, and to provide some useful insights for your team building with these Tapus. So let's begin. With the introduction of Tapus into VGC, we will now have to explore a mechanic that we really haven't seen in competitive play as much, terrains that were introduced in generation 6. Before we begin, let us talk about terrains because th these are very important to know if you are going to use the Tapus because the Tapus abilities summon these terrains. So first off we have Misty Terrain which has the following effects. If the Pokemon is on the ground, it will not be able to be affected by status condition. This includes sleep, paralysis, confusion, burn, etc. If the Pokemon is on the ground and so is its target, their dragon type attacks are reduced in power by 50%. Nature power becomes Moonblast. Camouflage users become Fairy type. Secret power has a 30% chance to lower the target's special attack. Pokemon holding the Misty Seed item will consume the item and gain a plus one special defense boost. In electric terrain, if the Pokemon is on the ground, it will wake up from this condition sleep and will be unable to fall asleep. So if you're being hit by yawn or you try to rest on electric terrain, you will not be able to fall asleep. If the Pokemon is on the ground, the Pokemon's electric type attacks increase 50% in power. Nature power becomes Thunderbolt. Camouflage user becomes electric type. Secret power has a 30% chance to paralyze. Pokemon holding the electric seed will consume the item and gain a plus one defense boost. And finally, a new ability that was introduced in Generation 7, Surge Surfer, will have their speed doubled when electric terrain is in effect. Next, we have a new terrain that was introduced in Generation 7. If the Pokemon is on the ground, it will not be affected by moves with a speed priority of 1 or higher. This, not, this does not affect moves with increased priority that the user uses on itself or moves that affect the field. So basically, priority moves will fail unless it's something like a prankster rain dance that will be able to connect. But moves such as fake out and faint, which are very important moves that have a high priority, in VGC, you will not be able to use them during Psychic Terrain. If the Pokemon is on the ground, the Pokemon's Psychic type attacks increase 50% in power. Nature Power becomes Psychic, Camouflage becomes Psychic type, Secret Power has a 30% chance to lower the opponent's speed stat, and Pokemon holding the Psychic Seed item will consume the item and gain a plus one special defense boost. And finally, we have Grassy Terrain. If the Pokemon is on the ground, it will recover 1 16th of its hit points each turn. If the Pokemon is on the ground, its Grass type attacks will be boosted 50%. Nature Power becomes Energy Ball, Camouflage User becomes Grass type, and Secret Power has a 30% chance to sleep. Earthquake, Bulldoze, and Magnitude's damage output gets reduced by half while Grassy Terrain is in effect, so basically their powers are halved. Pokemon holding the grassy seed will consume the item and gain a plus one defense boost. Now that we know about terrains, let's get into the Pokemon themselves. First off, we have Tapu Koko, which is an electric fairy type with the current abilities Electric Surge, which summons an electric terrain on the field, and its hidden ability, which is currently unreleased, is Telepathy, which avoids attacks from allies. Base stats are 70, 115, 85, 95, 75, and 130. Now speed being 130 is very important because it is a very fast Pokemon that's able to outspeed a large por portion of the Alola decks. Speed time with a couple of Pokemon such as Crobat and Aerodactyl. You're going to want to use the following natures for Tapu Koko. Timid, modest, jolly, adamant, naive, calm, and bold. 
Tapu Koko has the potential to be either a physical attacker, a special attacker, or a mix. It also has the potential of being a support Pokemon, even with its mediocre defenses and okay attacks. These are the most viable moves Tapu Koko gets. Thunderbolt, Thunder, Dazzling Gleam, Discharge, Volt Switch, Hidden Power, Brave Bird, Wild Charge, Sky Drop, U-Turn, Acrobatics, Steel Wing, Grass Knot, Reflect, Calm Mind, Substitute, Roost, Rain Dance, Thunder Wave, Power Swap, Light Screen, Workup, Electric Terrain, and Nature's Madness. If you want to go a special route, you want to use Thunderbolt, Thunder, Dazzling Gleam, Discharge, Volt Switch, Hidden Power, and Grass Knot. If you want to go a offensive physical attacking Tapu Koko, you're going to want to use Brave Bird, Wall Charge, Sky Drop, U-Turn, Acrobatics, and Steel Wing. If you want to go mix, you want to use a combination of the moves that I just listed. And you can also run Substitute on an offensive Tapu Koko. It also gets some great support moves. Reflect, Calm Mind, Substitute, R Roost, Rain Dance, Thunder Wave, Power Swap, Light Screen, Workup, Electric Terrain, and Nature's Madness. So you might wonder, why am I suggesting support Tapu Koko? Because most of the viewers are most likely not used to seeing or hearing about a support Tapu Koko. Now the reason I am suggesting a support Tapu Koko is it's another option and in the past there was a Pokemon in VGC known as Raikou which had a very fast speed as well as okay defenses and a nice special attack. Tapu Koko can be put in a similar position as Raikou because Raikou was able to have dual screens it was just fast it was able to get those dual screens up to help its teammates and it was able to get moves like Thunder Wave and just do some good damage electric type is fantastic in general and Tapu Koko can do similar things to Raikou so that is the reason why I'm suggesting Tapu Koko it's got enough defenses to where it can work and also the fact that it has a lot of great support moves and reliable recovery in Roost. If you want to go offensive Tapu Koko, you're going to want to run the following items. Life Orb, Choice Specs, Choice Band, Focus Sash, Zap Plate, Magnet, Choice Scarf, and maybe Assault Vest. If you want to go with more defensive Tapu Koko, the following items are recommended. Light Clay, Citrus Berry, Shucka Berry, Leftovers, Air Balloon, and Electric Seed. Now let's talk about Tapu Koko's partners and Pokemon that it struggles against. So for partners, you might want to consider the following. You might want Intimidate because Intimidate will help support Tapu Koko's low physical defense. So you might want to help it out a bit by reducing your opponent's attack stat. You're going to want Speed Control. Even though Tapu Koko is a fast Pokemon with a base 130 speed, don't forget its speed ties with a few Pokemon in the metagame. It's still slower than a few Pokemon, and also you don't want to deal with a mirror Tapu Koko and rely on speed ties. You're going to want to have Trick Room answers because Tapu Koko is a very frail Pokemon with a, with a very high speed stat. So Trick Room answers, you're going to want some to allow Tapu Koko to do its, to do its best work. You're going to want Pokemon immune to ground type attacks. This is because Tapu Koko is weak to ground type attacks especially the move earthquake which is very common in double you might want to pair Tapu Koko up with some fast sweepers just so you can have a lot of offensive pressure right off the bat and threaten some very quick KOs right off the bat rain setters Tapu Koko gets access to the move funders and the stab thunder in electric terrain that's 100% accurate is very nice to have for some offensive presence it's able to do a good amount of damage. Pokemon that scare intimidate users. If you want to use the physical Tapu Koko, you're most likely going to want a Pokemon that has the ability competitive or defiant to help scare away those intimidate users from Tapu Koko because Tapu Koko has already only an average attack stat of base 115. So most likely you don't want that lowered because it's already only average at best and Tapu Koko isn't doing that much damage other than wild charge. So you really don't want it any more lower so you really should consider competitive or define if you want to use a physical attack coco and finally pokemon with the ability surge surfer i did talk about surge surfer which doubles the speed and electric terrain so some options for partners we have gyarados crocodile arcanine and salamence all these pokemon provide intimidate 
and Gyarados is a Pokemon that can be used as a setup mod in case you want to use support Tapu Koko. Milotic and Braviary are both Pokemon that are able to scare Intimidate users with their abilities competitive and defiant, increasing their attack power when hit by Intimidate. Braviary is also su also able to support Tapu Koko with Tailwind, while Milotic is able to hit ground types which Tapu Koko can't hit very hard. Alola Form Raichu is a Pokemon that gets the ability Surge Surfer, and with Surge Surfer, its already base 110 speed will be doubled to be one of the fastest Pokemon guaranteed on the battlefield. Celesteela is a Pokemon that is a Steel Flying type, which means it's immune to both a Tapu Koko's weaknesses, Poison and Ground, so it is a very nice switch in for Tapu Koko. Aerodactyl is a Pokemon that is, gets Tailwind very fast, gets options like Wide Guard and Sky Drop to help support Tapu Koko. Polydon and Pelipper are both Pokemon that are able to get the Drizzle ability, which summons Rain on the field, so Tapu Koko will be able to gain a 100% accurate Thunder. Garchomp is a Pokemon that helps Tapu Koko out because it is a fast Pokemon that's able to do a lot of damage paired along with Tapu Koko that also resists poison. Now let's talk about things that Tapu Koko struggles against. Trick Room is obviously one of the biggest things since Tapu Koko has a very high speed stat. Scar Ground types, basically Garchomp and Crocodile. A lot of Garchomps have been Scarf lately so a Scarf Earthquake will be able to knock out Tapu Koko so it is a very huge threat able to knock it out before Tapu Koko can make a move. Lightning Rod users give Tapu Koko a very hard time. Lightning Rod users give Tapu Koko a very hard time because it is forced to either use Dazzling Gleam, U-Turn, Brave Bird, or maybe its support options, but it cannot use its main electric type moves, which are the main source of output for Tapu Koko because of electric terrain. And finally, strong special attackers. Tapu Koko only has a base special defense of 75, so no matter what, a strong special attack is still going to do a lot of damage to Tapu Koko. Pokemon that Tapu Koko struggle against. Mudsdale is a Pokemon that's a ground type that's able to knock out Tapu Koko in one shot, while Tapu Koko can't really hit Mudsdale except for a hidden power ice, grass, or maybe grass knock. But it isn't usually able to pick up the knockout while Mudsdale can Revenge knock it out. Marowak is a Pokemon that gets access to Lightning Rod and also can one-shot Tapu Koko with Boomerang or Earthquake. So forcing Tapu Koko to go for Dazzling Gleam or switch out, fearing Marowak. Magnezone is a Pokemon that resists most of Tapu Koko's moves and is able to hit it with a powerful Flash Cannon that will usually be a two-hit KO. Gastrodon is a Pokemon that Tapu Koko again can't really hit unless it carries Grass Knot or Hidden Power Grass while Gastrodon still can threaten Tapu Koko with the Earth Power. Gengar is a Pokemon that although Tapu Koko is faster than Gengar, Gengar is usually carry Focus Sash and is able to revenge knock out Tapu Koko with Sludge Bomb. Nihilego can survive a Wild Charge or Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain and then be able to pick up the knockout with Sludge Bomb. Garchomp is a Pokemon, along with Crocodile, that are known for being Scarf or Focus Sash users. So it's a very strong mind game. If it's Scarf, it's able to outspeed Tapu Koko and just pick up the knockout, while Sash users are able to knock out Tapu Koko. Also, the fact that Tapu Koko can't really knock these Pokemon out unless it's carrying a Choice Specs or maybe it's going Modest Life Orb. Now I want to talk about Tapu Koko's damage calculations and I want to give you guys some sample spreads. So some calculations that I was able to do would be Max Special Attack Nihi Lego Sludge Bomb versus 164 HP Boosting Nature 180 Special Defense Tapu Koko You are able to survive except it has a 6.3% chance to Oko. Non-invested Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko versus Max HP 212 Special Defense Celesteela in Electric Terrain is always a 2 KO even after 2 Leftovers Recovery. This is very important because after taking a Thunderbolt Celesteela will be able to get to Leftover Recoveries and then will be able to go for the move Protect to gain another turn of Leftovers Recovery. So being able to guarantee knock it out after 2 Leftover Recoveries is fantastic. Max Special Attack Life Orb Tapu Koko's Hidden Power Ice versus 
four special defense guard chomp is able to oko 93.8 percent chance of the time max special attack timid life for tapu koko's thunderbolt versus max hp for special defense milotic in electric terrain has a 93.8 percent chance to oko while a max attack life for tapu koko's wild charge versus max hp Max Defense Milotic in Electric Terrain is always a guaranteed Oko, which is a very impressive calc for Tapu Koko because very few Pokemon can one-shot Milotic. Max Attack Choice Banded Brave Bird from Tapu Koko with a Jolly Nature versus 252 HP 4 Defense Tapu Bulu is able to Oko 68.8% chance of the time. Max Attack Jolly Tapu Koko's Wild Charge versus Max HP Max Defense Tapu Fini in Electric Terrain is always a guarantee Oko. Max Special Attack Choice Specs Tapu Koko Thunderbolt versus Max HP Max Special Defense Tapu Fini in Electric Terrain is always a guarantee Oko. And finally, we have Max Attack from a Jolly Nature Choice Banded Tapu Koko's Wild Charge. Versus Max HP 100 Defense Tapu Lele in Electric Terrain is always a guarantee Oko. Let's talk about the sample sets I'm going to give you. First, we have the standard Life Orb Choice Specs option you guys can run for Tapu Koko, which is usually the standard where you can run, which is a very simple spread. Basically, max special attack, max speed. You can run timid or modest nature depending on your speed preference. And you can run Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam. Substitute or Hidden Power depending on your choice, and then Protect or Volt Switch. For a Life or, cho or Choice Banded version of the physical Tapu Koko, we have Max Attack, Max Speed, with a Jolly or Adamant Nature. Again, speed is up to your preference. With Wild Charge, you can have Ray Bird or Sky Drop as your Flying type move. U Turn, and then Protect or Steel Wing. Steel Wing is for coverage for Pokemon like Tapu Lele in case you don't want to take damage from Wild Charge. And it also hits Nihi Lego. And finally we have one of the defensive Tapu Kokos that I talked about with leftovers. You could also run Citrus Berry with the EVs of 164 HP, 180 Special Defense, and 164 Speed. This allows it to survive Nihi Lego's Sludge Bomb with a Timid Nature and non-boosting item 93.8% chance of the time. 164 speed with a neutral nature on Tapu Koko allows it to outspeed Nihi Lego as well, as well as Garchomp and a few others. A calm nature is required to live the Sludge Bomb, and you can run Thunderbolt, your choice of Reflect, Light Screen, Roost, Thunder Wave, Taunt, and finally Protect. Let's move on to the next Tapu. Now we have Tapu Lele, which is a Psychic Fairy type with the ability Psychic Surge, which summons Psychic Terrain on the field. And Telepathy, its hidden ability, unreleased, which avoids attacks from allies. Its stats are 70, 85, 75, 130, 115, and 95. The natures you're going to want to go for this Pokemon are Timid, Modest, Quiet, Sassy, Calm, Bold, and Relaxed. Tapu Lele is a Pokemon that is very highly valued in VGC. Priority is such a big thing, and with Psychic Terrain, you are able to avoid taking priority attacks. Tapu Lele does have low physical defense and okay speed, but it has high special attack and special defense. The viable moves for Tapu Lele include the following. Psychic, Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, Psy Shock, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast if you really want to go there, Grass Knot, Charge Beam, Protect, Calm Mind, Substitute, Skill Swap, Aromatic Mist, Psychic Terrain, Aroma Therapy, Nature's Madness, Sunny Day, Taunt, Light Screen, Reflect, and Safeguard. So Tapu Lele can be used as an offensive Pokemon, it can be used more as a support mon, it's just how you want to look at Tapu Lele and what fits your team specifically. If you want to go an offensive Tapu Lele, you're going to want to run the following items. Life Orb, Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, or Focus Sash. If you want to go a more defensive route with Tapu Lele, you can run Leftovers, Citrus Berry, Light Clay, Psychic Seed, or one of the berries, Babiri, Kasi Berry, and K Kibia Berry. Reduce the damage from the super effective Steel, Ghost, and Poison attacks. So let's talk about Tapu Lele's partners and Pokemon that struggles against. So partners you might want. You're definitely going to want Incinerate for Tapu Lele. Its physical defense is pretty bad, and you're going to want something 
that can help support Tapu Lele with its physical defense. So Intimidate is pretty much a must for Tapu Lele. Speed control, you definitely want some kind of speed control because you either want to run Trick Room. A lot of people like to take advantage of the fact that you can't get faked out in Psychic Terrain. So they, they might want to choose to go for a Trick Room mode because this allows you to stop the fake out turn 1 and also fake out to stall out Trick Room turns. You might want setup Pokemon because being able to get rid of priority from hitting your sweepers is very nice for the sweepers. And Pokemon that can handle steel types. Tapu Lele is a psychic fairy type. It really doesn't like steel types. It doesn't really have much to hit it. So you might want to have a Pokemon that can hit steel types for a good damage. So partners, as we mentioned, Intimidate with Tapu Lele is a must. Gyarados, Crocodile, Arcanine, and Salamence are viable Intimidate options. Ninetales is a Pokemon that can benefit with Tapu Lele because Ninetales has a very, very fast speed stat of base 109. And the way a lot of people are designed to handle Ninetales is with the move Bullet Punch, which is a priority move. With Psychic Terrain on the field, you are immune to Bullet Punch. So it's a very nice partner and they complement each other well. Porygon 2, Oranguru, they're both Trick Room users and they're pretty bulky and Tapu Lele is able to support them with the Psychic Terrain and Dragonite because a lot of people with multi-scale, that's how they stop usually Dragonite's multi-scale. They break multi-scale using a fake out and then will attack with their super effective hits. However, you cannot do that while Psychic Terrain is on the field. So Dragonite can actually sweep with the psychic terrain up because you're no longer be able to fake out or maybe a priority move to break that multi-scale before the main damage doer to Dragonite attacks. So things that Tapu Lele struggles against. There's steel types as I said before it can't really touch steel types for that well. Strong physical attackers this thing doesn't really have any any physical defense. Physical attacks will do a lot of damage and fast focus sash poison types which are actually pretty common so a Tapu Lele will struggle. The most common Tapu Lele is Scarf so even if you're able to outspeed the poison types that are common you're still going to break them to their sash and then they are able to Oko you back. So Pokemon that Tapu Lele struggles against are the following. Scizor unless it's carrying Hidden Power Fire but Hidden Power Fire might not KO Scizor all the time. Celesteela, uh, Tapu Lele really can't touch Celesteela and a Heavy Slam will knock out Tapu Lele. Magnezone can take the hits from Tapu Lele very well and just fire off a Flash Cannon. Gengar can just fire off a Sludge Bomb. Alola Form Muck has great special defense so it's not really worried about taking special attacks too much and can fire off a powerful Gunk Shot or Poison Jab. And Metagross resists basically everything in Tapu Lele's strongest offensive move pool, except Shadow Ball. But Shadow Ball isn't going to be able to pick up the knockout on Metagross, and it can fire back with a Meteor Mash. And also, the fact that Metagross can't be intimidated makes it a very, very threatening Pokemon for Tapu Lele to deal against. So, I want to talk about Tapu Lele's damage counts and some sample spreads that I've come up with. So, with 148 special attack with a modest nature, Tapu Lele Psychic versus 4 HP, 4 special defense, Tapu Koko in Psychic Terrain, it is a guarantee Oko. So, if you want to run the Choice Scarf, the minimum special attack you need is 148 to knock out Tapu Koko in Psychic Terrain. With a max special attack, Timid Nature, Tapu Lele Psychic versus max HP. Zero special defense, Tapu Bulu, it is a guarantee to a KO, even after Grassy Terrain, which is very nice. With max special attack, Timid Nature, Tapu Lele Psychic versus max HP, zero special defense, Tapu Bulu in Psychic Terrain, it is a guarantee to a KO and does a, quite a bit of damage. For most bulky Celestia that don't invest in much attack, you can survive Heavy Slam that invests up to 52 attack EVs because they usually invest more in bulk with 252 HP and 172 defense. And you can survive Tapu Bulu's Wood Hammer in Grassy Terrain with max HP and 244 boosting nature defense Tapu Lele. Some sample spreads that I've come up for you guys. Tapu Lele with a Citrus Berry with a relaxed nature. This is mainly for Trick Room usage. 
With the moves Psychic, Moonblast, or Dazzling Gleam depending on preference, Reflect, Light Screen, and Protect. With max HP, 244 defense, and 12 special defense in order to survive the wood hammer. Another set would be the leftover set, which is more of a calm mind set. With max HP, 172 defense, 20 special attack, 4 special defense, and 60 speed with a modest nature. With Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam, again it com comes down to your preference. Do you want that spread or not? Psychic, Calm Mind, or Substitute and protect. Now, Substitute is a great move for Tapu Lele because it allows it to stay longer on the field, so in case you need to switch out to reset the Psychic Terrain, it's a great move to have. And Tapu Lele, the most common the most common variant of Tapu Lele is usually the Choice Scarf, or you, they sometimes run the Choice Specs option with the following moveset. Moonblast, Psychic, Hidden Power, Fire, and then either Fundable, Dazzling Gleam, and Energy Ball compared to their preference. If they're struggling against Gastrodon, they'll run Energy Ball. If they're struggling against Pokemon like Gyarados, they'll run Thunderbolt. And if they want just a powerful spread move, just Dazzling Gleam with max special attack and max speed, usually with a modest nature. And I think that's all I have to say about Tapu Lele. Let's move on to Tapu Bulu. Alright, Tapu Bulu, Grass Fairy type with the abilities Grassy Search and Telepathy. Grassy Search summons grassy terrain on the field, while Telepathy is a hidden ability unreleased that avoids attacks from allies. Its stats are the following 70, 130, 115, 85, 95 and 75. The natures you're going to want to use for this Pokemon are Admin, Brave, Careful, Impish, Relaxed, Sassy, and Jolly. Its viable move pool is the following. Wood Hammer, Leech Seed, Superpower, Megahorn, Rock Slide, Zen Headbutt, Smart Strike, Stone Edge, Rock Tomb, Sword Stance, Substitute, Protect, Grassy Terrain, Leech Seed, Taunt, Bulk Up, Rototiller, Toxic, Light Screen, Reflect, Nature's Madness and Disable. So, Tapu Bulu does get special attacks. However, it doesn't have a great special attack at all, and its physical attack is higher. And the fact that it gets moves such as Wood Hammer and Horn Leech just make it so that it's more of a physical attacking Pokemon. Its special move pool is pretty poor anyway, so you're going to be running physical Tapu Bulu about 99.9% .9 chance of the time. Tapu Bulu is a great option. It's actually the slowest of all the Tapu, so it does make it more viable in Trick Room. It's got a great attack stat. It's got great defenses as well, so it's a pretty overall solid choice. If you want to use an offensive Tapu Bulu, you can run the following items. Life Orb, Choice Band, Choice Scarf, and Assault Vest sometimes, Miracle Seed and metal plate and also iron ball if you want to run the iron ball fling strategy it helps again it helps in trick room as well and for a defensive tapu bulu you want to run citrus berry leftovers light clay grassy seed or one of the berries yachi aka koba and babiri berry which is ice fire flying and steel they reduce the super effective attacks. You don't want to try to poison berry because this thing is four times weak to poison. All right, let's talk about Tapu Bulu's partners and Pokemon that struggles against. Partners that you might want to consider are the following. Intimidate. Just because Tapu Bulu has a high defense stat doesn't mean you couldn't boost it any higher. Intimidate allows Tapu Bulu to survive even more hits. Speed control, always nice because Tapu Bulu doesn't exactly have the best speed in the world. It's the slowest of all the Tapu, so Trick Room, maybe Thunder Rave or Icy Wind to help. And this thing is a massive attacker, so you definitely want uh, Tapu Bulu to be the fastest thing on the field. Pokemon that benefit from, gra from the grassy terrain. There are a few Pokemon that would benefit from getting the recovery from grassy terrain, so definitely look into them. Rain Setters, because this Pokemon is weak to fire. Rain Setters are pretty nice for Tapu Bulu. Pokemon that scare Intimidate users, Tapu Bulu is a very hard hitting Pokemon and you definitely want to scare away Intimidate users if you can. So Pokemon again with the ability competitive or defiant. And finally, Pokemon that can handle poison types because this thing is four times weak to poison. So partners you might want to include, again this Four Intimidators, Gyarados, Crocodile, Arcanine, Salamence are always great options. Politoed and Pelipper are able to give it the drizzle. The rain is up and will reduce the super effective fire type attacks. Porygon 2 and Oranguru can help 
with the Trick Room, and also the fact that uh, Oranguru can use Instruct to allow Tapu Bulu to go for two Wood Hammers at the same time, which is pretty scary, and Wishy Washy, which is interesting, but what Wishy Washy does benefit with Tapu Bulu is the fact that one is part of the Grass Water Fire Core, two, its ability is schooling, so when Wishy Washy goes under 25%, it will no longer have that ability schooling, which turns into that powerful monster. However, if Wishy Washy is under 25% and then somehow gets back up over 25% from like Leftovers Recovery, the Grassy Terrain, it will actually reschool. Its schooling ability will reactivate and it will become that monster once again. So it's a very nice partner combined with Tapu Bulu. What are things that Tapu Bulu struggles against? Poison types are pretty much the main thing because it cannot take a poison type attack for its life. And Pokemon with high defense that resist grass type attacks. This thing doesn't exactly have the best move pool in the world, so um doesn't have the best move pool in the world, so it's basically gonna resort to its grass type attacks as his main way of offense. So basically if you have a Pokemon that can take the grass types pretty well, that's uh that's basically how you counter it. Pokemon that Tapu Bulu struggle against Torkoal which is one because it is able to knock out Tapu Bulu in one shot with a sun boosted fire type attack. The fact that even if Tapu Bulu hits it with a rock slide, Torkoal has high defense and can take it pretty well. We have Alola form Muk, which Tapu Bulu really can hit for much damage and a poison type attack will just be able to knock it out. So Celesteela is just a Pokemon that Tapu Bulu cannot touch it really cannot hurt a steel flying type. A quad resists grass grass type attacks and is able to just two shot it with the heavy slam. Scizor is a Pokemon that Tapu Bulu also doesn't like. It's got pretty decent defense and also the fact it's got bullet punch and it's yeah, you just really can't touch Scizor at all. Magnezone, it's another Pokemon you cannot touch with grass, rock, psychic type attacks. You do have superpower, however, which is an option. But Flash Cannon will might be able to just pick up the KO. So Lazo, it's a fire poison type. It outspeeds Tapu Bulu and is able just to pick up the knockout pretty easily. Gengars and Nihilego also are able to fire off powerful sludge bombs. Crobats, faster, can go just for a cross poison. It, res it quad resists one hammer. Although I think Woodhammer would still do about 50% because Crobat's not the best thing. And Metagross is able to take Tapu Bulu's attacks pretty well. So let's talk about some damage calculations that Tapu Bulu has because it can be pretty insane. So on minus one, max attack life of Tapu Bulu's life orb versus non bull Gyarados in grassy terrain is a guaranteed Oko. That's right, even after Intimidate, it's a guaranteed Oko. Max attack Tapu Bulu's Woodhammer versus... No defense Garchomp in grassy terrain is an 81.3% chance to Oko. That's without Life Orb. That's without Life Orb or a boosting item. That is insane because Garchomp is one of the bulkiest Pokemon that VGC has had in a ton of different metagames. Max Attack Life Orb Tapu Bulu's Wood Hammer versus Max HP Max Defense Tapu Lele in grassy terrain is a guaranteed Oko. This thing is a monster. Let me just say it's a monster. And Max Attack Cel Celesteela's Heavy Slam, which you'll probably never see, versus Max HP 140 Defense Tapu Bulu, you can guarantee live it. So what are the sample spreads? I've given you the Life Orb set, which is just straight on offense, some decent bulk, just have an adamant nature, Max HP, Max Attack, go with Wood Hammer, Rock Slide, your choice of Lead Cheat, Substitute, Toy Stance, compared to your preference, I don't really like a lot of the options it gets, maybe if you want superpower and protect. For the choice spend or assault vest variant, you could run max HP, 116 attack, 140 defense with an adamant nature, wood hammer, rock slide, horn leech, and superpower. And finally, leftovers Tapu Bulu, if, in case you want a more defensive Pokemon to take advantage of the grassy terrain, combined with leftovers recovery with max HP. 20 attack, 140 defense, 92 special defense, and 4 speed, adamant nature, horn leech, leech seat, substitute protect. This thing's able to stall 
And yeah, that's what I have to say about Tapu Bulu. Let's move on to the final one, Tapu Fini. Last Tapu, we have Tapu Fini, which is a water fairy type with the abilities Misty Surge, which summons Misty Terrain on the field, and Telepathy, which is a hidden ability, unreleased. Again, it avoids attacks from allies. Its stats are the following, 70, 75, 115, 95, 130, and 85. It's got pretty good bulk, just like most water types. The natures you're going to want for this Pokemon are Timid, Modest, Quiet, Sassy, Calm, Bold, and Relaxed. This Pokemon is great defensively or offensively used. It has a pretty good move pool out of all the four Tapus. Its bio move moves include Scald, Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power, Muddy Water, Grass Knot, Hydro Pump, Nature's Madness, Calm Mind, Protect, Misty Terrain, Haze, Heal Pulse, Light Screen, Reflect, Substitute, Rain Dance, Safeguard, Brine, and Toxic. This thing's got a great move pool. It's also got access to Heal Pulse. None of the other Tapus do, and it can be used as a pretty good support for Pokemon. Haze can be useful as well. And this thing has some great, great coverage in general. For the items that you want to use for Tapu Fini, if you want to go offensive, you're going to want to run the following. Life Orb, Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, or Expert Belt. If you want to run a more defensive Tapu Fini, maybe for support, you're going to want to run Leftovers, Citrus Berry, Light Clay, Misty Seed, Walkin, Rindo, Kibia Berry. That's for the Electric, Grass, and Poison attacks that are super effective. These berries will reduce them in half. Here we go, Tapu Fini's partners and Pokemon that struggles against. So Pokemon that you might want to increase its overall bulk. You Again, Intimidate, Intimidate is good with anything to be honest. Able to increase Tapu Fini's bulk. You're going to want speed control because this thing doesn't exactly have the best speed in the world. 85 is okay, but it's not the greatest. You're going to want set up Pokemon because it does have options to uh, heal pulse, all the dual screens, etc. Rain setters. This thing is part water type, so you can boost this water type attacks with the rain. You're going to want ground types as well because two of Tapu Fini's weaknesses, which are poison and electric can be switched in with a ground type. Ground types are immune to electric types and resist poison type attacks. And finally, we have lightning rod users, which help cover its weaknesses for electric. So the following partners you might want to include, again, the four intimidate users, Gyarados, Crocodile, Arcanine, and Salamence. Pytoad and Pelipper are rain setters. Flygon's an interesting Pokemon, but it does, it is a support Pokemon, and it also gets access to Dragon Dance. So if you want to support Flygon, it's definitely there. It's definitely a viable option. Marowak as a lightning rod user. And finally, Garchomp, which is a nice ground type. So things that Tapu Fini struggle against. Tapu Fini is really unexplored, so there really isn't much you can say about it now. But super effective hits. It doesn't like taking electric grass or poison. That's going to be basically how most people are going to be doing good damage to Tapu Fini. And fast heavy hitters. This thing isn't exactly the strongest Pokemon in the world or the fastest Pokemon in the world. So it's most likely going to be underspent and be able to miss knockouts and then get attacked again. So it's most likely it's going to be trading two attacks for one sometimes. And Pokemon that Tapu Fini struggle against include the following Alola for Muck. Because of its poison typing, it's able to use poison, jab, uh, gunk shot, and also the fact that it has great special defense. So it's going to be able to take on Tapu Fini pretty well. Tapu Coco and Tapu Bulu. It's actually weak to the other Tapus. And this is kind of why you don't see Tapu Fini. It's, it gets one shot by uh, Wild Charge and Wood Hammer. So those are very, very scary Pokemon to face against. Especially since you're going to... You're going to see them a lot in this metagame. Magnezone is a Pokemon that Tapu Fini doesn't really like facing because it does have a very strong Thunderbolt option. And Gengar, again, two Sludge Bombs will be able to pick up the knockout on Tapu Fini. You can't really stop that. And also the fact that Scald can't even burn. So even if we somehow bring Gengar to its focus ash, it is impossible to burn. Here are some damage calcs and sample spreads that I created. There aren't really much since I don't know what I would really use this thing for, but... The following that I have, uh, 116 Modest Special Attack Tapu Fini's Ice Beam is able to knock out Garchomp 100% of the time. Max Special Attack Tapu Fini Scald versus Max HP Marowak only has a 25% chance to Oko. However, just a note, Hydro Pump will be able to pick up the knockout on Marowak. So that is an option in case you want to consider it. Max Special Attack Tapu Koko's Thunderbolt 
in Electric Terrain versus Max HP, 28 Special Defense, Tapu Fini is a guaranteed 2 hit KO, which is very nice. Max Special Attack, Tapu Lele Psychic versus Max HP, 28 Special Defense, Tapu Fini is a guaranteed 3 hit KO, which is very impressive. And finally, we have Max Attack, Choice Banded Arcanine's Wild Charge versus Max HP, 4 Defense, Tapu Fini. You already guaranteed survive that, so that is pretty impressive. That's able to take a very powerful Wild Charge. For the sample sets that I created, there's the Choice Specs item. There's the Choice Specs variant where I decided to go somewhat bulky with max HP, 100 defense, 116 special attack, 28 special defense, and 12 speed with a modest nature. With Moonblast, Scald, Ice Beam, and Hidden Power, you could also run Dazzling Gleam if you want over Moonblast. We have the Leftovers variant here. Max HP, 132 defense, 76 special attack, 28 special defense, and 20 speed with a modest nature. You could also run Substitute over Calm Mind. This is the Calm Mind variant I made up with Calm Mind, Scald, Dazzling Gleam, and Protect. And finally, we have another Leftovers variant. Or you could run Citrus Berry on this one. For This is for support Trick Room. It has Max HP, 180 defense, 68 special attack, and 4 speed special defense with assassin nature just basically increasing its special defensive ca capabilities with the moves heal pulse nature's madness which is basically a super fang scald and protect and that is all i have to say about the tapus so i hope that this video has helped you understand and explore the possibilities that the tapus offer to vgc if you guys did like this video please leave a like down below and if you have any feedback be sure to leave it you can check out my other stuff down below and otherwise, yeah, I'll see you guys around in another video. James Speed 1 out.